Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So we have just landed in Whitehorse, which is in the Yukon in Canada. This is our first time here and actually the furthest north in Canada that either of us have ever been. And we have a really, really cool winter adventure week ahead of us. We are super excited. We're gonna be partnering with the tourism board while we're here and they put together a great itinerary for us, for us to experience winter in the Yukon and this is a destination that we have wanted to visit for so many years like even before we moved to Canada we would watch shows TV shows about the Yukon it was like 10 years ago before we even like knew what Canada was like before we even knew that we were gonna move here so yeah it's been on our bucket list for a very long time it was a what two and a half hour flight from Vancouver we flew with Air North which is the Yukon's airline and it was so nice and we got free food, we got warm cookies on the flight. I've never ever got warm cookies on a flight ever. So yeah, it was a great island to fly with. It was a really smooth and easy flight. Just picked up the car and we arrived at our hotel where we'll be for the next couple of days. So we've got a really cool adventure week plan. We're gonna do like dog sledding, hopefully, fingers crossed, lots of aurora watching. This is one of the best places in Canada to see the northern lights this year is also a very very active year for the aurora so fingers and toes crossed that we get lucky um we're also going to be doing like some snowshoeing and just exploring and i'm super excited it's also really nice to come somewhere that is entirely new isn't it and somewhere that like we've never been before we don't really know what to expect but i feel like the best adventures are like that when you just have no expectation you don't know what it's going to be like and you just kind of take it as it comes. So we've just arrived at our first accommodation in Whitehorse to a place called Black Spruce, which is a very, very cool and charming set of cabins in the forest. The entire build is eco-friendly, made from natural materials. It's really, really cool. We are in the green cabin. We've got a lovely full kitchen. The bed is just over here. And how nice is it gonna be to wake up to this alpine view. Good morning! Today is the first official day of our Yukon adventure. Oh my god, there's dogs on the road! <gasps> we are um, just about to go dog sledding and there's a couple of dogs on the road just here, maybe they're from the place. Hi, Hi cutie! Don't fall the eye. <laughs> security has come to check us out. We uh, got up bright and early this morning and we have driven about 30 minutes south of Whitehorse to a place called Ayaluk and uh, we're going to be doing dog sledding this morning which I'm so excited about. I feel like the Yukon adventure has like officially begun this morning. Yesterday was a bit of like an intro day um, and the drive down was gorgeous. The sun doesn't rise until about nine o'clock ish so we watch the sunrise over the mountains and it's super quiet and the landscapes are just stunning and we're both really excited to get out and explore so we're going to be dog sledding through the forest this morning and a bit of this afternoon and I'm really excited for the dogs not gonna lie missing Fino a lot already and the last time that I went dog sledding was a few years ago in Churchill and uh, that was literally what made me like really 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 actually want to get a dog and so I texted Matt afterwards I was like we need our dog we need to get our dog and then that's kind of when we put the Fino plan into place so maybe this will be dog number two maybe this will be dog number two <laughs> we'll see um but yeah I'm very excited so yeah we're gonna head up I can see all the dogs running around now <gasps> this one's really pretty we've arrived We've arrived in heaven. This is what heaven looks like. <laughs> Hi, Hi. you little tail. Hello. Hi, cutie. Oh, you're beautiful, aren't you? Okay. Hello. 
Now she looks naughty. <laughs> this one reminds me so much of Fino. <laughs> Very poor, aren't you? Look at this. The dogs are beautiful. Roll breath. So Sweet. loving. <laughs> no. So beautiful. Now she looks naughty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the dogs have. These little houses which they sleep in, they're insulated and uh, it keeps them nice and warm. They're bred for these conditions, they're bred for mushing. Hello! <laughs> they're all super lovely and happy and the operation here is really cool. So we're going to head out on the sled, hello! And um, head across the river and through the forest with a set of dogs. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> Take all of them home. <laughs> What's this one called? Dragon. Dragon. Hey, dragon. Hey, dragon. Hi. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Uh, I want to take every single dog home with me. You'd be a great buddy for Fino. <laughs> How did you like dog sledding? It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> so much fun. We went uh, around uh, the river. I think it was like a seven kilometer track that we did, wasn't it? And Hubs was in a snowmobile in front. So he was getting some shots. And uh, yeah, it was just so stunning. Like the sun was coming up through the trees. The mountains around were really beautiful. We were just cruising along the frozen river. And the setup at Aliuk is really cool. So the couple that own it, they've had it, was it 17 years? And they're originally from Quebec and then they came over here. They have what, 47 dogs. Uh, some of them are still working and mushing and some of them have retired and their dogs are all just so beautiful. And you can tell that they're just loved and looked after. And yeah, I could just stay there all day just petting all the dogs. You did? I did stay. A long time paying the dogs. <laughs> it's such a cool thing to do and you can actually do overnight dog sledding trips. Uh, you can do like overnight ones, you can do three day ones, you can do seven day ones. I'm not sure if Aliak do that but there are other, if not there are other dog sledding um, companies and tours that allow you to camp out overnight and I guess you just take all your camp stuff with you on the sleds and that will be super super cool so if we ever came again in the winter I would love to do that. It's just such a cool setup and I would highly recommend them. The team were just so lovely and friendly and it's really cool to learn about like the awards that they've won. Uh, Marcel, the owner, she uh, competed in a race. It was like a 12 day, a thousand kilometer, thousand kilometer race. I did a rod. Is that what it was called? Yeah, so she participated in that. It was just her with her dogs for 12 days straight, no sleeping just mushing the whole time looking after the dogs and yeah she was like a very badass an amazing woman um but yeah really cool to learn about their story and experience dog sledding in the yukon such a cool thing to do so if you're coming make sure you add it to your list we are now just kind of road tripping aren't we um we are heading where we're we heading to car cross car cross uh which is south from where we were dog sledding and so yeah, we just stopped off at a place called Emerald Lake. Obviously, it's not very emerald right now because it's covered in snow, but this is like the southern southern lakes area and there's lots of lakes around here. This is so cool. So this is Carl Cross, a very small town south of Whitehorse. So this is home to the Tagish First Nation people who've lived here for thousands of years and it was also a really important 
destination in the gold rush era all of the buildings have been preserved in their old style which is really cool it's a very cute and quaint little town i love all of the indigenous artwork and all the buildings there are quite a few like museums and visitor centers uh, but sadly nothing is open um, maybe it'll be open in the summertime um, but yeah it's a nice place to add to your list if you're heading this way What were you looking for? All of the creatures. <laughs> There's tracks everywhere in the snow and we're trying to figure out which track belonged to which animal. There's porcupines around here too, so seeing if we can find any porcupines. So this trail that we're on here is just from Black Spruce, which is uh, the cabin that we're staying at. We uh, drove down to Carcross and then came back sort of a different way to the way we came looking out for caribou because uh, there's a lot of caribou around there but sadly didn't see any um, and then we popped into downtown Whitehorse and went to a restaurant called it's like a bar called the Dirty, Dirty Northerner which was actually really good the pizza was great had a really good salad and pizza that was delicious um, and yeah now we just come for a little walk around our cabin found this nice little lake little opening and yeah, such a beautiful evening. We've so locked out with the weather because it's not even been that cold. It's like probably got minus five at the minute, which is, you know, pretty good, pretty moderate, especially considering it can be like minus 35-ish, which is a little bit brutal. So yeah, I'm glad it's not too super cold. So we set an alarm. We went to bed about nine o'clock, got up at 12 and came out and we managed to catch the aurora which is so so cool this is actually just taken on my phone as soon as we got to the spot um, but it ended up dying down a bit but you can see all the beautiful colors i can't believe this is just taken on my iphone um but yeah this is very very cool we're going to be keeping an eye out over the next few days and fingers crossed we get lucky again shows all of the eight indigenous languages here. And this is a very interesting map because <clears throat> on here, it has the actual traditional names of, of the First Nations and also of, of, the other, of the different types of waters and lakes. So we're actually right now in, we're in the Southern Toshone area. This is Asiac Lake. So this area here, this is where my grandma they migrated from the from this from the northern Toshone area all the way over to here. It's a great distance to be traveling. Right? And when you think about it, it's like this like a long ways to travel <laughs> mm. to come through and to come through to come through Little Sam and Carmack's area. Yeah. When they say comments, this this is actually looking at the what those names mean. Mm -hmm. So like Eagle River, um stone for driving stake into creek <laughs> big cool. island wolf lake and then you've got the english names here like today we're, we we can speak our we can speak our history um, we can demonstrate we can do um, cultural camps now that also assist us in, in passing on that traditional knowledge uh, to to our next generations and then those generations then will be passing it on to their children and then their grandchildren. So when it was done privately, it was that because uh, indigenous people were still in a, in a time of, if, if, so, if, if we're caught doing our traditional things, we will be incarcerated. If we're caught um, drumming or dancing in uh, traditional ways, we will be incarcerated. So all of that was hidden away, even when I was like a seven-year-old child, this is in the 60s. Um, I went to my first funeral, and after that funeral, the, the men 
broke away from all the women and children and they went to a different house in the village and all the women and the children went to another house. And so they didn't want to gather together because they didn't want to attract authority that they were practicing their traditions. Even though by that time they were allowed to start practicing those traditions, they were still fearing that they might get incarcerated. Yeah. I was seven years old when I witnessed that. That's crazy. Um, we're talking about our technology of, of utilizing, um, first of all, moose, the hides, and actually the one big question is, okay, this is raw hide, but how did you get the hair and the flesh off? How did you get it so nice and clean like this? Um, by ad actually utilizing the bones, the leg bones of, of the moose in order to punch and cut off the hair, to remove all the hair right to the underlying um, bristles. And then to also utilize another leg bone that has two ledges for defeshing and scraping and softening your skin. And then what would the hide primarily be used for? For clothing, mm -hmm. uh, such things as like this one here. So this is, this is caribou, which is much thinner than that one there. Uh, yeah. There was always a trading and always a bartering type system. Mm -hmm. uh, people bringing gifts to you, um, you getting gifts at pot watches, you know. Um, naming ceremonies, um, um, your daughter's um, potential husbands coming and trying to pursue uh, marriage with your daughter. Mm -hmm. They bring all kinds of stuff. The carcass of that um, wolf will be placed up high. This is out of respect for the animal. So all animals that help sustain our life, whether it's for fur, uh, for clothing, food, all the remains, a lot of the bones are placed up high. Um, it's against the land law to just throw the bones carelessly around on the ground. So we're just at the long ago people's place which is about an hour from Whitehorse and it is a very very cool camp which is dedicated to educating people about the Southern Tachoni First Nations community, the culture today and uh, life sort of in previous years and we've just been learning about the camp here, about um, life for the Southern Tachoni people, for the tools that were once used and are currently used for hunting and for life and for building and trapping. We have been visiting the camp here. They just had some bannock and soup and uh, Meta, who is our guide, has been teaching us so much about her life and her family and, you know, what it's like in the First Nations community. There are actually 14 First Nation communities in the Yukon, 11 of which are self-governed. And um, yeah, it's just been absolutely fascinating and really, really wonderful just to learn firsthand about Meta's family and her community and her ancestry and really cool just to be able to ask questions and expand our knowledge. So I would definitely recommend adding it to your list if you're in Whitehorse or you had an over to Haynes Junction um, or Kluwani. It is a really, really cool way to spend the morning. You can do tours here. You can also drop in, I think, and just tag along on a tour that's already happening. But yeah, it's just a really nice insight into the indigenous history of the Yukon and Canada and this area and yeah I have loved this morning. Going on a little Kluwani road trip. So we checked into our lodge for the night um, and now we're just heading into Kluwani National Park or... Is that near Kluwani? That is what? It's Kluwani not Kluwani. It's Kluwani. Kluwani. How do you know it's Kluwani? I think it's Kluwani. I think it's Kalani. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> uh, we're heading into Kalani National Park to explore, just heading over to Kathleen Lake and uh, yeah, just kind of seeing where the road takes us. Um, it is a beautiful day. We were supposed to go flight seeing today, but it is a little bit windy, so it got cancelled. So fingers crossed we can do it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's just so nice to be just on the open road, exploring, seeing what we find. We've seen like 
zero other cars considering this is like peak season there's no one here <laughs> there are just so few people on the roads which is really nice we feel like we just got the whole place to ourselves and it's just breathtaking with you A great time road tripping and we've just arrived back to our accommodation for the next couple of days we'll be staying at mount logan lodge which is a really cool wooden lodge not far from haynes junction next to kalani national park and it is really really gorgeous you've got this beautiful wooden house there's a yurt there's a couple of cabins we're on the top floor and the views are amazing there is a somewhere behind me a sauna there's dogs running around and yeah it's just a really lovely place super super pretty and the hosts are so lovely as well so we'll be spending some time here um having all well, meals here dinner here together and then tomorrow we're going to be heading out with one of the guides uh for a snowshoe in the morning so i'm really looking forward to that so this is a view from our balcony. How incredible is that? We've got the Kluani Mountains as the backdrop. There's also a yurt here and there's a little cabin around the side. And I'll show you our room. And then this is the bedroom area. It's so lovely and spacious. And then we also have a beautiful view of the mountains. Good morning, just getting ready to go for a sunrise hike from the lodge. We uh, didn't have any luck with the aurora last night sadly. Um, it was extremely windy and that was just blowing all the clouds in and so um, we didn't go out last night. We were supposed to do a flight scene tour over Kluani National Park today or this morning but the wind is too strong so maybe we might get to do it tomorrow it's just nature isn't it it's just one of those things that you just have no idea whether it's going to happen or not and if you do get to do it then you've got extremely lucky but we're going to have a beautiful day of hiking today um, the weather is looking like it's going to be really lovely like clear blue skies and um yeah i'm excited so we're getting all wrapped up because it is very very windy still um but i've actually no idea where we're going we're going out with our guide derek uh, from matt logan lodge um so yeah it should be really nice and i'm intrigued as to where he takes us on the road again we're just uh, driving up the Alaska highway towards Alaska and the views are spectacular we're both a little bit tired aren't we and a little bit windswept um, after our hike this morning but it was so cool we had no idea what to expect our guide Derek took us out we left um, in the morning while it was dark which meant that we were well on the trail when the sun came up. The sunrise was beautiful and it just like the pink and orange clouds and the sky was gorgeous and we were surrounded by mountains. So we did um, a 12K hike in the Alask Valley just next to the lodge and uh, we were out for about four, four and a half hours and uh, it was just 
unbelievable it was incredibly windy but we snowshoed for a little bit we hiked up this like little rocky section so we had like incredible views over the valley and of the mountains um, but apparently it's common and normal for it to be super windy um in Kluwani so just something to know apparently summer is pretty windy winter is pretty windy and um, that's also why our flight scene tour got cancelled again um just because the winds just kind of fly off of the uh, ice fields but yeah just something to keep in mind just to set your expectation um, but the hike was wicked um really really loved it really also enjoyed hiking with a guide we've never we never really seek out guides do we when we hike but uh derek is the guide for mount logan lodge and uh he took us out and he was so knowledgeable about the whole area about the wildlife the landscapes everything it's really cool to do a hike that we probably wouldn't have done on our own i wouldn't have found on our own so yeah definitely recommend Derek and going out on a hike and just getting out if you're visiting the lodge or visiting this part of the Yukon just at Kluwani Lake now which is about half an hour half an hour from the lodge and uh, yeah we're just gonna get out and keep exploring and it's a beautiful day and yeah it's just just happy to be here honestly <laughs> the <sun. laughs> There's no sun. <laughs> it's just wind. We are back in White Horse. We've just come out for a wander at a place called Miles Canyon, which is about 15 minutes or so from downtown Whitehorse. It's really beautiful and also such a nice day. We uh, travelled back from uh, Haynes Junction or Kluwani National Park this morning. It was about an hour and a half drive and I honestly loved our time at Mount Logan Lodge. It was so special like the most special experience the hiking was unbelievable yesterday was it yesterday yeah yesterday um and uh the lodge itself is super cool it's basically a wooden log cabin in the middle of the mountains and uh the host roxanne who hosts you at the lodge is so lovely and warming and welcoming and the setup is basically it's basically a big beautiful big cabin with like communal areas like a lovely living area dining area the hosts cook all your meals for you while you're there and um it's just so nice like at the end of the day to have dinner together the food was unbelievable we said to roxanne the host that she needs a cookbook because the food was phenomenal like last night we had the elk no elk or bison Elk. elk yeah elk stew and dessert and starter and we had croissant sandwiches for lunch and our hike and cookies and everything's homemade and homemade bread and it was just oh it was just so good we just really really loved our experience there um so we we're already talking about coming back to the yukon in summer and driving up maybe and bringing fino we could stay there with fino because it is dog friendly and uh, yeah it's just a really special place to be so if you're heading up to whitehorse or the yukon i'd highly recommend incorporating that into your trip because it just it felt like we were like properly in the yukon it was so remote the mountains around there are unbelievable and um, so yeah that was a really whoop. <laughs> Oh god, he nearly went. Oh, I'm gonna watch you go down and then uh, oh. you can show us how it's done. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> use, just, the, use the edges. Should I just get out of my bum? Oh. I was so scared for the camera then. Yeah, me too. Oh. I was gonna throw it up, fall, <laughs> and then catch it. If I this hand. <laughs> oh god, I'm using the edges here. Oops. Oh, oh. Okay. Ah. I've got no idea how we're gonna get back up here. Maybe we don't come down. <laughs> How's this gonna work? Whoop. <laughs> okay, four more to go. <laughs> so this is the canyon. Some of it's frozen, and then this part is fully flowering. There's all these little 
paw prints all over the frozen river and they belong to beavers and otters apparently. Are you ready? Ready for the heist? You got the plans? <laughs> <laughs> we are heading out for one last aurora sesh. Fingers crossed. Fingers, toes, everything crossed. So we will get up and ready for our final night in the Yukon and our final night of hopefully aurora hunting. Um, it was funny because we were at dinner earlier. We went to a place called Gather, which is right by our hotel. So we're now in a new hotel. It's called the Raven Inn and it is in downtown Whitehorse and it's really nice lovely modern and really good location we were eating at a place called gather which is across the street and it's a really cool mexican restaurant and uh it started snowing and there was a full-on snowstorm we were like yeah there's no way we're going out tonight and then by the time dinner had ended it was like clear blue sky stars in the sky and it was perfect so yeah the weather changes very very fast um but we're heading out with a company called northern tales and they do lots of different types of tours and aurora tours and we're going to be heading about i think it's about half an hour drive out of the city to one of their locations um and i think they have like a fire going and they have like a tent and there's like a whole setup um and hopefully we'll get to see at least a clear sky the aurora would be incredible and um, it's just one of those things you really just don't know but our kind of perspective on it has been like we're here so we're here let's go so every night we've been checking the forecast some nights we've been sleeping from like 9 to 12 and then getting up and going out for a couple of hours and coming back and going back to bed like i feel like we're only here once maybe um and we're not going to come for a while again so yeah i want to take every single opportunity we can to go and see the sky and hopefully see the aurora it's a really cool little tent little warming tent as we wait for hopefully the aurora what are you getting? That's you. Bangar Spice. <laughs> no sleeping yet. So we're just lying on the snow under the stars which are covered with clouds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just being patient. Got a little hot chocolate from one of the warming tents and just gonna keep crossing our fingers that the clouds clear, the weather just changes so quickly. It was so clear a couple of hours ago and now it's not and maybe that will change back. Fingers crossed. Good morning. We are uh, pretty tired this morning. We only had about four hours sleep and we've just got to the airport, but we had luck with the Aurora last night. It was the best ending to the trip. We um, went out with Northern Tales and they have a site about 20 odd minutes outside of um, downtown Whitehorse. And it's really cool because it's just like, basically like just a big open area like a field I think and um, they have lots of different like cabins and tents and inside there's like a fire there's seating there's snacks and drinks and they're all like rustic um, and old um, but it's really nice to have a space to just hang out while you're waiting for the aurora especially as it gets cold but yeah we got there and it was like super super cloudy and so we thought we'll give it a bit and then the hamster just getting the bags out um yeah and then eventually the clouds cleared and uh we were actually just taking some star pictures and matt was like oh my god what's that and the sky was flashing and then the aurora came out and she was beautiful and it was actually quite a short show and the forecast didn't really call for a, a strong aurora at all it was like a kp2 i think we hung out for a bit longer and then we saw it again and it was just really cool and it was also a reminder that if you get somewhere and it's cloudy just wait and the skies might clear um and also a reminder that yes the aurora forecasts are good but often it just happens so you literally just have to sit and watch and wait which it is literally a game of patience you never ever know who you're going to see the aurora but i guess that's like part of the magic isn't it and the great thing about white horse is it is that bit further north and so um you have more chance of seeing the northern lights dawson city which is also in white in uh, the yukon is more north and that really is 
within like the aurora bell um and so you can get really good aurora sightings there too so anyway i'm gonna leave this vlog here we are just about to get our flight back to vancouver i'm already excited for the warm cookies on the flight with air north yeah it's just a really really nice touch um but it's only like a two hour 15 journey back to vancouver which is pretty good and i feel like people often think the yukon is much further away but it's really not that far and um yeah it's just been an incredible week we've loved our trip haven't we it's been so good it's been great <laughs> and um yeah it's just such a cool place to visit in the winter time but also the summertime experience here would just be entirely different there's obviously so much wildlife here little fact for you there are roughly double the number of moose in the yukon than there are people <laughs> so the population of the yukon is about like 40 odd thousand the population of the moose is around 80 thousand um, we did actually see a moose the other day but she ran um off the side of the road as we were approaching um but yeah there's something like 8,000 grizzlies, I think it's grizzlies, or bears, pretty sure it's grizzlies. Um, but yeah, there are lots and lots of wildlife, caribou, um, bison, moose, there's black bears, there's grizzly bears, all sorts of amazing wildlife. It kind of depends what month you come in and what season you come in as to what you see. Anyway, thanks so much Ooh. for watching. <laughs> yeah. Is it cold? It's gonna be back to like minus 26 next week. Mm. We got a little break in the weather, but yeah it's cool so anyway we're gonna um get in and get checked in but i hope you enjoyed coming along with us i will link my blog post guides um in the description box down below let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next one bye